in our last video, we got the battery pack off of the car and started moving it away to make some room to work. Now, unfortunately, I forgot to double check one of my camera settings, uh, so there's no sound here. So it looks like we'll be doing a lot of voiceover in this video. First look at the battery, we could see there, there was a good butyl seal all the way around this plastic sheeting, uh, as well as at all the spots that bolt holes went through the battery pack. So that part looked pretty good, but up in front, oh boy, a um, whole bunch of water, uh, some surface rust around some of these holes here. This whole line here has rusted nuts on it, just water around here in general. And right here, these are two of the bolts that I pulled out that the one uh, had a lot of surface rust on it. We can see where uh, the outside of this battery pack uh, had gotten wet. That was a hard bolt to remove. And then up here, uh, that's one of those places where the bolt goes all the way through the battery pack. And you'll notice it's got that silicon gasket on it. And that's to keep uh, water from getting into the pack from the top. Now if we follow the water up to the other side, this gets us to the main high voltage fuse cover. And you can see here, it is rusted, uh, definitely corroded. That's a problem. So at the back of the pack, this was one of those aluminum plates that was supposed to be removed uh, before taking the battery pack out. Uh, unfortunately, one of those screws was corroded in stopping that. And then over here, this is a little uh, air fill port. You can pull that out and then uh, pressurize the battery by uh, putting a little uh, pipe nipple in there. At the back of the battery pack, you can see how dirty it is, but these rubber seals are around our ports. Uh, those are the low voltage ones for the, uh, the safety interlock and data and BMS and all that sort of thing. And over here, these are the high voltage ports. Uh, there's also a ground and an alignment pin right there. Obviously, we got to keep this clean. So I shop vac this all off and put uh, tape over these ports here. Back up at the front of the battery pack again, we've got the wetness and uh, look at all the rust. I think there's even like uh, maple leaf seeds in there. Uh, pressing on the top of the fuse cover, we could actually feel it uh, flex in that way that uh, rusty metal does when it's sort of uh, puffed up like a puff pastry. Uh, this was definitely a no good fuse cover. Uh, so the next thing was going to be uh, pressure checking the battery pack because we had a feeling that uh, this was no longer airtight at the fuse. Whereas everywhere else that we could see on the battery pack actually looked very good. At the back of the pack, we threaded in an adapter to be able to hook up a hose to the pack. And that's going to a manometer. It's a device that measures air pressure. And we just have a very low amount of air pressure in the battery pack. Uh, this is following the, uh, the Tesla service manual available online. We just put a very small amount of air in there with a little air pump. Uh, the old plug just pulls out with a, a little hex key right here. And then by pressurizing and monitoring the numbers on the manometer, uh, we we're able to see whether or not the battery pack holds air. And indeed, it does not. We could see the pressure dropping. But I also had a bottle of soapy water. And by spraying soapy water right here, we can see the air bubbles coming out right around the fuse cover definitely not airtight and if it's not airtight it's not watertight after cleaning and drying the fuse cover it's a matter of taking out these screws uh, this uses a security torx bit that's got a little hole right in the middle to be able to pull these screws out if you don't have a security bit set uh, get one they're super handy for so many different things this is a vt20 So I just used my cordless drill to pull the screws out of the high voltage fuse cover. For the sealant, I used my utility knife to cut through it all the way around the fuse cover plate. 
and then used a palette knife to cut away at it. Now once you're under the cover, uh, officially you're supposed to be using a non-conductive tool. I'm just going around it right now. And then once that seal is broken, it's time for the high voltage gloves and very gingerly remove this. And we have access to some of the high voltage components for the very first time. And we can see the fuse right in there. And unfortunately, right away, I could see that there was some moisture inside here. The next step was to remove the fuse. I'm wearing my high voltage gloves and using insulated tools. But I had also used my multimeter to check the fuse for continuity and that there was no difference in voltage between uh, these two electrical terminals. And after pulling out the fuse, I could see water in the bottom of the fuse box. It's kind of hard to tell. It's sort of an optical illusion here. But there's about a quarter inch of water in there, along with a whole bunch of rust that fell off of the fuse cover. This is nasty, nasty stuff. We dried out the fuse box with sort of a giant homemade cotton swab with a non-conductive handle. And then after that, we decided the next thing to do was to take off the penthouse. Uh, this is sort of a separate cover, a bulge in the front of the battery pack. Of course, it's sealed up with uh, some nice thick sealant, so we have to use a palette knife and tap away at it to break through that seal. Now, Rob had done this before. He did a very good job. I apparently did not know uh, how far to try to cut through this because uh, later I did find in a couple of spots where um, I had gone all the way through and actually left some marks on... Uh, the side of some of the parts inside the battery. So don't do that. So with the cover off, we can see sort of this mica sheet here, which we'll take off in a second. And on the far right side, the coolant pipes and the coolant quick disconnects and some corrosion. And we certainly saw some water inside here on the batteries. Uh, there were definitely some droplets and some surface rust. It did look like surface rust, though. I mean, just kind of on the outside of a few cells. But uh, there was definitely some water in here. Uh, and then the other thing, too, was on the case itself, there was some water. And here Rob's using the endoscope to look around in here to try to get a view at some of the places that we otherwise would not be able to. So that was sort of a, a handy tool to have around. So that definitely let us uh, see a few places we wouldn't be able to otherwise. Now right here is the outside of the case at the area we were just looking at. And you can see some pretty big water droplets here. But there's really no way for water to get in. This whole area was very, very well sealed. And it's at the far opposite side of the battery pack from the main fuse cover. So based on that and the surface corrosion that's in a few other places where water couldn't directly have gotten to, I'm pretty sure what actually happened was that water got in through the rusty high voltage fuse cover. And then inside that box, there's a couple little holes higher up. And I think that the water just evaporated and then it condensed inside uh, the penthouse in this area where these two cell modules are. Now, where did all this water come from in the first place? Well, it turns out that on the early Model S's, the hose for the air conditioning condensate actually came out directly above the battery pack. And even though later there was a, a recall or a service bulletin or something about this, uh, some cars were missed. So all the water from the air conditioner went directly on top of the battery pack, rusted out the high voltage fuse cover, got in by the main fuse, and then activated an error that would prevent the car from working. And that was it for the day because we had to let the battery pack dry out. So we put a bunch of fans on it and let that run overnight. In the meantime, I went to the hardware store to buy some sealant, some hose, and I still had to find some sort of material to make a new high voltage fuse cover. 
That's it for now. I hope you like these videos. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And in the next video, we'll put the battery pack back on and see what happens. Until then, stay charged up.